Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm J.D. Hoovener, and welcome to the Bold Lawyer Show. Uh, I'm here with this, uh, this new format for attorneys or anyone who may be aspiring to be an attorney. This show is going to be featuring uh, live interviews with founders of bold lawyers from around the country. Um, they're oftentimes solo or small firms. They're just getting started, or maybe they're well on their way, but they have figured it out. They figured out something, and they want to be able to share that with you, the audience. So um, we want this to be interactive. So if you happen to watch this live on Facebook, on Instagram, or YouTube, I'll be prioritizing any live questions and asking that of myself, who I'm, I'm the owner here at Bold Patents Law Firm, <laughs> which way am I pointing, um, and our, um, the guest as well. You're welcome to ask, ask her any questions. So as you probably saw from the title, we're going to have a special guest. Her name is Isaro Carter, owner at the Carter Law Firm. And we'll be doing uh, an interview with her. So let's bring her on to uh, the show. Isara, welcome. Hi, thank you, JD. Hello, everyone. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, you got the wind blowing your hair and everything. Looking so good. <laughs> it's just really hot in New York <laughs> right now. And the way my AC is set up, it, you know. I, whew, hey, all good. <laughs> Very good. Well, um, and this is going to go to the podcast listeners, too. So they're, they're, they're missing out. And they're missing out. So oh. if you if you're listening on the podcast and you want to catch our show live, we're here uh, Tuesday afternoons, 2.30 on the West Coast and 5.30 on the East Coast. Um, so, it's Saro, um, you are the owner at the Carter Law Firm, mm -hmm. and you said New York. That's where you're based out of? Yes, New okay. York City. Awesome. And um, I didn't give you much uh, prep time at all. I just emailed you today. I was like, hey, I had a cancellation. Can you please be on the show today? So, um, thank you so much for being a good sport and being willing to to share some time. I know it's precious. So we can go lots of different directions with this show. Mm -hmm. We keep it pretty general. If we do get any live questions, we will uh, kind of answer those as we go. But I love starting with mm -hmm. a founder story, mm -hmm. um, kind of having you explain, walk us through why you set up the firm, maybe what was the initial spark that got you thinking about owning your own practice. Mm -hmm. And for anyone out there that might be thinking about hanging their own shingle, what are some things you can share? So give us that founder story first. Okay, no problem. So um, pretty much like I've always known that eventually at some point in my career that I'd be working for myself. Um, I just never knew what capacity like that would, I guess, take form um, in. But around 2020, um, I was working for a firm. I was doing actually family law. Um, matrimonial and criminal law at another small firm um, and stuff was like drying up because you know in around March in New York that's when like the lockdowns and everything were happening because of the pandemic and so I was looking around at you know the a little bit of work that was coming in and then I was looking at my boss who had also been my mentor since before I got to law school, um, her name was Midwin Charles. And, you know, I was looking at her, she was looking at me and I was like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and she was like, you know, whatever it is that you decide to do, if you want to, you know, do business development and have um, some clients come in, if you want to start something on your own, you are more than welcome to. Um, she was really great. She pretty much supported me in everything that I did. She was kind of like, my legal mom, my legal fairy godmother. And um, eventually I decided, okay, well, now is a good as time as any to start my own law firm if that's what I want to do and if that's how self-employment is going to take uh, shape in my life. So um, I did it and I told her and she supported me through and through. She kicked me some clients. Um, she gave me every single resource under the sun that she had used to start her own firm um, after leaving big law. And uh, That's yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. What's, her, what's her name again? Her name was Midwin Charles. So unfortunately Charles. she passed away in 2021. Oh my um, okay. Sorry. But, you know, she was truly like the catalyst to getting that done. And at the time that I decided to get it done. Okay. Got it. So, so it was actually family law practice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Got it. 
And that is not what you're doing now, is it? No, I do entertainment now. Um, <laughs> How did you make that change? Okay, I, I didn't know that actually. By the way, it's already, mm -hmm. you and I are in a mastermind together. We get to yes. chat about all kinds of things. And that is one of the reasons why I started the show is I want to get some of that learning, some of that things that everyday founders, owners of firms, they don't get to talk about or learn mm -hmm. about. It seems like it's all hidden and behind closed doors. So mm -hmm. um, thank you again for being here and for sharing that story. But let's uh, first go there. How did you go from family law to entertainment law? Got it. So to be honest, entertainment was where I started. Um, and so before law school, I, I just always knew I was going to work in the entertainment industry. In fact, the way that I met um, Midwin was through an entertainment um, boot camp that I had done in, in undergrad. It was like the year 2015. And um, I was a part of the um, Women in Entertainment um, Empowerment Networks, like summer boot camp, just for college aged young women who were never exposed to the entertainment world before, um, but wanted to, you know, get their foot in the door. So she was a guest professor at one point. And um, this is before law school. Oh, yeah. This is before law school. So I wasn't was, necessarily legal related. You're just entertainment. Just entertainment, entertainment okay. down. Because <laughs> even before then, right, I thought that, you know, I was going to be a doctor. I was going to med school until like Orgo came in and told me that I would not be going to med school, <laughs> you know. So like I just changed courses and I was like, OK. I might as well just follow my dreams and my passions. Like I come from a family that is very, very entertainment oriented and like very much in the performing arts and the visual arts. Um, we have musicians, we have dancers, we have painters. We just have everybody, like everybody's doing something. Um, I was not blessed with the the talent, but I could read and write really well. You know? yeah, right. and I, get, uh, uh, I can make a hell of an argument, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, okay, let's try our hand at a different profession. Like, let's see where I could find my footing in the law um, behind these things. Because even at the time, like growing up, I would see, you know, my family members going through things. And I would even see some of my favorite entertainers going through transactions where they were getting the short end of the stick. Um, their ideas were getting taken from them. Their intellectual property was getting taken from them. And I was like, this is your bread and butter. Like, how are you supposed to, you know, make a living and like sustain yourself off of this if um, there are all these pitfalls um, that are kind of designed for you to fall into because you don't understand, right? Like the legal jargon, you don't understand the business aspect of things. Um, so that's where I found my niche. Like that's where I found where I can fit in. Um, and so once Orgo wasn't, you know, like once the med school stuff wasn't going to work for me, I was like, okay, the law, I can definitely do. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I got into that. And every single internship and every single job that I had um, in undergrad, it was just entertainment oriented and it was in different facets of the entertainment industry. And then even in law school, when I was doing my externships and internships, entertainment straight except for one time where I tried to make sure that entertainment was exactly what I wanted to do. And so I did crimmigration um, at a nonprofit. Crimmigration. Yeah. So like the intersection of criminal law and sure. integrate, um, immigration. Okay. And it was very fulfilling and very impactful work. But for the same reason why I left family law and matrimonial stuff is why I decided not to go down that route. Um, right. It's very emotional. Um, and like, there are a lot of really huge and heavy issues that go on. Um, some of the ugliest parts of humanity, like you'll see play out in these spaces. And it was really hard for me to not take that home with me. Um, yeah. so I was like, yeah, let me just go back to what my passions are and do something, you know, it's not as light, but you know, a little lighter. Yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, that's heavy, <laughs> sure. this. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I guess that's something I have. I sort of almost take for granted, you know, the type of work that we we now do intellectual property, mm -hmm. um, patent law. It's all opportunistic. It's happy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, there's no one's mad when we mm -hmm. when we are. Um, so we got a random LinkedIn, LinkedIn user. I'm impressed with your level of knowledge. Wow, amazing. 
Very nice. <laughs> well, I assume we're talking about our guests today. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're talking about both of us, they would be accurate in the level of knowledge. So thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let's see. So went back to your roots, entertainment. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those people are out there, maybe they're you know still at a big firm, and they're like, how would I even land my first client? You mentioned there were some introductions you got from your previous firm, but mm -hmm. how did you kind of get those first or one, their first mm -hmm. client in entertainment? Um, so I think that everybody in entertainment will kind of say the same thing, like whether you're a, a lawyer or even if you're an A&R at a, a company or just you're an agent, right? It's always going to be somebody that you know, like your connections are going to be everything. Your network is going to be everything. Um like I said, right, like growing up, I was just kind of entrenched in the performing arts and the visual arts. So there were a lot of people around me who were creating things, but didn't necessarily know a lawyer um, or right, like have an entertainment accountant or just anything like that. They were just doing it out of the love of these things and not even realizing that they really could have a sustainable career um, in this. So my first client was actually a family friend. Um, Perfect. <laughs> yeah, and she's still my client today, and right. she's one of you know, it's like she's a, a union member for WGA, so she's on strike now. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What, catch me up to speed. What's going on with the strike? How is that affecting her or and all your clients? I guess. Yeah. So, um, pretty much like the way that these strikes work is, um, all of these different unions that exist in Hollywood, they. <laughs> It was for you. Oh, well, well thank I'm you. I'm awesome, too, but all the love is <laughs> going for you. Sorry. Go, go ahead. Thank you so much. I'm going to interrupt um, you. Go ahead. So the way that all of these unions work in Hollywood um, is that, like, for every set amount of years, um, the studios and the people who are in the union come to an agreement. Um, and that's going to be their standard agreement. And it sets, like, how much people are paid, how many hours they're going to be working. Like, just what is the... I guess, like, what are the parameters of this employment and what are the parameters of payment? Um, and this year, uh, the Writers Guild of America, they had greater demands that they wanted. And in my opinion, rightfully so, um, they would like to be paid more. Um, they would like to, well, and this is kind of just like the overhead view of like some of these bigger issues. They would like to be paid more because the executives keep getting paid more money and their rates haven't raised for a very long time. Um, and inflation is kind of killing like what they are being paid now. Um, also AI is a huge issue right now, like generative AI um, with the things like chat GPT and like companies like stability AI and like things that are out there that are creating um, essentially some of the things that they are able to create not at the same level at this point, but we know technology, right? Like in the direction that it's going, um, they wanna make sure that their jobs are going to be safe and that they're gonna have security um, in the future with, you know, like these looming issues. And there are so many other things going on. Um, and so, you know, the studios, well, a lot of studios haven't come to an agreement with them yet and they are at the negotiation table. And unfortunately, um, we're kind of at a stalemate right now because you see them, they're still striking in the streets like since May, the Writers Guild. Wow. Um, the actors just went on strike a couple of weeks ago and there are talks now, even as recently as today, that that's going to continue on until 2024. So, um, wow. They so, will I, I know. So, like, so studios would be, for example, mm -hmm. like Paramount, would that be? A yeah, like. Paramount and you know like Fox, like 20th Century Fox and you know like Disney like all of these big name like just production studios. Why don't they just go direct to individual writers or maybe they do or well hire them in because in Hollywood the way that it works is that um, if you are a working writer and you're making a specific amount of money you're eligible to be a part of the union and the thing about the union is this is where people get their health insurance. This is where people get like, you know, like their benefits and things like that. And like the union is where you want to be. <laughs> like so when you're working, right? Like the union is where you want to be. And 
you make a great point. Why aren't they going directly to um, some of these? Hiring their own writers in house. I mean, maybe they've got some, but right. Well, well, they don't. I guess just because of like the way that the economy like just kind of works um, in yeah. Hollywood. But to your point, right? Some of um, some of these networks, um, they've actually at least on the soap operas, right? Um, something that I was reading earlier the soap operas are actually hiring scab writers. Um, now the problem with being a scab, twofold, and it's many fold, but two overarching ideas. One, being a scab, you're never gonna be in the union. Uh, scab is like a temporary, is that what that means? N well, you are a non-union writer who has crossed the picket line. Got it, so like, so nobody in the union likes you. You're. <laughs> <laughs> and you you're not gonna be able to join it. <laughs> Got it. So you have burned a bridge. Ever. Okay. Yeah, that bridge is burnt. That shit has sailed. Um <laughs> Do you ever represent scab riders, or that's maybe not based on the way I'm hearing you? I mean, not me personally. And that's just that's just my personal thing. I'm in solidarity with creators in the creator economy. That's why I went into intellectual property, like in entertainment, like to begin with. Um, I am with creators. Um, but then like, also the issue with that is you have more protection, at least the way that I see it in my understanding of just like the labor effort and like go all the way back to the industrial revolution, like up to now, right? Like you have a bit more protection in a union going up against like these big studios than you do as an individual. For sure. I remember at, I was at Boeing before I became a, um, as an engineer. Mm -hmm. Before I became a lawyer, and there was an engineering union, and it was great. Right. Like they had all the research, and they had all the negotiating power, right? An exactly. individual is going to get just probably junk, you know, not as not as good benefits or pay. So they they've got the advantage, right? And then the lever they can really pull is doing just what they're doing now, which is exactly the right? most leverage that you have, like as an individual non-union writer who is intending to scab. Yeah is that moment where you decide and then from there you can be exploited however you want. You don't have the negotiating power. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for going deep on that. that no I, problem. I, I, um, so let's, let, let's, let's pull back. Let's go back into law firm mm -hmm. a little bit. So let's say, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the, uh, as you got started, maybe that year one or year two, what are some of the big golden nuggets, big lessons learned that you could pass along to our audience kind of looking back uh, as you started out? Some of the biggest lessons, um, I know that a lot of people um, who are thinking of like making that plunge and making that jump, um, they kind of like, you know, like there's a little bit of fear mixed up into that. Um, I mean, the scary part really isn't uh, starting it. It's really easy to just start, right? Like the mechanics of starting, um, it really is like just getting clients in the door and things like that. So one of my biggest tips I would say is, it doesn't matter if all you have is a website and a business card. You might not even have a real like working functional office space. Go network. Go tell people that like you're out there, you know, go start building up your network, start building up your contacts. Let people know that you're around and that you're available and that you can help. Um, Who did you network with? I mean, let this is go. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't mind, I mean, because this is, this yeah. is great. Because I, I have actually a little block in my calendar for networking and I end up mm -hmm. kind of going to the same kind of folks, but. What do you, for you know, what did you, who do you network with? No problem. So um, I network with, um, I would say, like, I would start by saying, like, just two primary groups, right? Like other attorneys and then also people who are, right? Like the people that I would be working with. So when it comes to other attorneys, potential clients, um, potential clients. right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so, when we're talking about attorneys, right? Like I uh, joined the executive committee of like some of these different bar associations, right? So like I am the secretary of the Inter entertainment and sports law section of the New York State Bar Association. Um, and I've been that since 2019, right? So now we're talking before I even started right. <laughs> the firm, you know, I was laying that foundation. Um, and that is one of the best places, I think, especially if you're just starting out to um, to just network with others because I think 
what you're going to miss from being at a firm and then now working on your own is the collaboration aspect of things and being able to just walk into someone's office and, you know, ask a quick question here and there. You're going to have to know other attorneys that you're going to be able to pick up the phone, um, ask a question to like send an email and be able to get a response, right? Like the same day, you know, like build those relationships and um, allow them to share with you like the knowledge that they have about, you know, what it is that they're doing. Like, even for example, right, like the mastermind that you started that I'm, you know, a member of. Right. I'll do that too. Because that. there are plenty of attorneys that have walked this road before. And, you know, I'm a very firm believer in that there's not you don't have to learn everything firsthand through like personal experience. Yeah. You can learn from the experiences of others sure. and it can okay. bring you a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what people are listening here. Hopefully, maybe watching after the fact are hoping to get from you. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, this is good. This is really good. So, you actually networked with potential clients, and mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I was always scared to do some mm -hmm. of that because of like these, you know, the special. You can't go solicit or post. Exactly. But, um, and so I kind of hid behind this digital advertising marketing mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. um, but I imagine entertainment law, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's in person. Yeah. Or, you know, a lot of that times events. Mm -hmm. What are some things? Did you sponsor events? I mean, or just go hang out um, at certain places? How um, do you network with potential clients? So you're right, right? Like about that soliciting thing. I, I don't do any of that. <laughs> lawyer, you're a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I'm in the room um, around people who essentially right like are my peers but i'm also a geek for the entertainment industry so i actually am very interested in what these people do so i'm going into these rooms and i'm asking them about what it is that they do and how they got started and why do they love like the facet of the entertainment industry that they love and then because of regular conversation people ask me questions about what i do and i just tell them what i do and if they're interested in what I do, then I'm like, okay, well, this is where you could go and find that. We don't have to talk about this today. And, <laughs> and I'm not hounding you. And then, then I walk away. You that's know? Hard. That's um, very good. There's no hard stuff. That's perfect. So it's just you being curious and interested in mm -hmm. the area of law that you're in. I guess that seems yeah. obvious. Um, that I guess that's kind of like me. I used to go to the CES, Consumer Electronics Show, mm -hmm. just to go have fun, go see what all the new gadgets and stuff are out there. And yeah, I did happen to have my business cards, but you're right. That was the easiest way to go is when they, if they do happen to ask me what I do, oh yeah, I'm doing this by the way. And so it's, but it's after truly being interested and, and, uh, you know, caring about what they're doing. So. Yeah. Uh, and to be honest, I, I am interested in what other people are doing and how the landscape is changing because that directly affects the clients that I already have. Like, right. and I go to like these educational um, networking events where, you know, they're talking about developments, they're talking about the new movies that are coming out, like they're just talking about everything that's happening in entertainment. I want to know, because if I'm worth my hourly rate, I better know. Yeah. Okay. Not just continuing legal education, but continuing mm -hmm. uh, education within your your industry and, and, and niche. That's yeah. a big point right there. Um, okay, so you'd mentioned, um, because that's kind of the big lessons learned. What are some of the um, ways that you are trying to you know, grow your practice? Um, and I know that that can be something some people want to do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, as you kind of put the, the chart, the course, what are some things you're, that you're trying to do now, mm -hmm. maybe struggling with, or you know, maybe they're having some success with when you're trying to grow? So for me personally, it's how I tackle my marketing. Because again, I never want to fall into the realm of solicitation, um, but I also want people to know that I'm here and I'm available. Um, you know, like I'm taking new clients and also positioning myself as somebody who knows what they're talking about um, without giving legal advice and, you know, going into that realm of, you know, that attorney client you know, like building that relationship um, when I am doing things. So um, one of the things that I'm figuring out right now is um, my digital marketing, um, like mapping that out and what that's going to look like. Um, for a long time, I was doing it by myself. 
and I guess like two years really isn't a long time, but it, it felt like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I show your um, website? Yeah, yeah, or, of course. Let me, let me share a screen. And it just, I'll flash it up here so people can see it and I'll put that mm -hmm. in, the, in the link as well. Mm -hmm. But this, this was recently redone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was redone in 2023. Um, the first two iterations of this website were not great. Um, but it worked, okay? The links worked and all of the information was there. And you know, I was proud of it because I had done it myself. And I would let people know, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And I think that it was endearing, at least, for the first couple of people that were working with me because they signed up for consultations and they're still my clients today. So it right. works. <laughs> no, I think it's, this looks really clean and I love Thank it. Um, and, and you're not hiding you know, with your specialty, right? Creatives, you know, I mm -hmm. like that a lot. Mm -hmm. you're looking for you know hey create creative so mm -hmm. um, I, i'd like to smart. speak directly to the people that i want to work with because i think at the, specifically when it comes to creatives and just like people who make things because of their love for the things that they are creating in the space that they're in um they can be very emotionally like attached to it and i think that sometimes being a lawyer <laughs> um there's a disconnect with like you write like that empathetic side of things and then like also like the business side of things and like i i think that i do at, at least like my clients tell me right that i do a really good job of taking care of like their ideas and their creations like as if they were my own or they were like my own family members, because at the end of the day, like they have poured their hearts and souls into these things. So like, I always try to make that come across in like what my marketing is. And if you want like the kind of lawyer who doesn't care about that, I'm not your girl, but. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and so it is just you for now. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that keeps it really simple. Do you well, envision me and my social media manager who I just got hey. a couple months ago. So what, whatever you see on Instagram and you know on TikTok and stuff, I just showed up and I gave like the legal information. She put it together in that pretty package and she okay. did the strategy on it. So but I, I was I saw a couple of your TikToks. They look pretty mm -hmm. cool. Very, very informal style. You're just laying it out for people. Yeah. Uh, so this is your TikTok right though, right there, CarterLawFirm.co, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's you. Cool. I've started to do some of those as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's fun. You have to try to be where your where your clients are. Exactly. Um, those newer newer platforms. So let's take the last few minutes there and talk about that. Mm -hmm. Even though it is a social media as a contractor or mm -hmm. third party, how did you go about hiring that? You know, that how is that process for you? What are some lessons learned if someone's looking to do that and they're solo, they've been doing the social media on their own? Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to hire someone? Um, mm -hmm. I know it's early, but has it has it paid off? Are you what do you like about it? Um, I'll start by answering the question that you said of like, um, why like hire somebody like so early on? Um, I think that when it comes to like my business, but really just like any business, right? Um, the person who starts it, they started because like, they're really good at this like one thing. But I think that what makes a business succeed and you know, what makes it live, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't eat itself. Um, is being able to as quickly as possible hire experts at like the different factors that go into, you know, like operating the business and like bringing in new business. Um, the lawyering thing, you know, I have my credentials. I would say that I'm pretty good at that. Um, okay, absolutely. That's your thing. Right? You know? yeah. yeah. But lawyering is my thing. Um Social media strategy, not so much. Uh, graphic design, not so much. Video editing, no. Like, I'm not good at that. I think that in the early iterations of my social media, that showed. Um, and anytime, like, I put my name to something, I really just want it to be the best version mm -hmm. of it. Um, and I knew that I wasn't the person to be able to give it the best version of that so i just had to i had to hire somebody and um how i chose um the social media manager that i work with now um 
I knew that number one, I wanted a contractor because um, I don't think that my business is ready for employees yet. And I think that that's a personal decision that each, like just each law firm will have to make for itself. Um, just run the numbers and see what works. Um, right. But a lot of research <laughs> went into looking for this person. Um, I wanted somebody who would understand um, first and foremost, me, my voice, um, and what I'm trying to communicate to, you know, my target demographic. And then second, understand who my target demographic is. Like, of course I have that information and, you know, like I, I give that to them and, you know, talk it out, but I also wanted them to understand like how to do research on that target market and understand like how they interact with social media and which platforms are they really on like someone who really understands social media and then two I mean three somebody who would really understand that specifically like when you're working with a law firm there are a lot of like there's a lot of red tape that we kind of have to work around um a lot of disclaimers, a lot of disclosures. There's certain things that I can't say and, you know, certain things that I can't do. But then how do we get creative enough in this creative economy to still, you know, get the message out and still have like the right strategy so that people understand that I, I do know what I'm talking about, but I can't just, you know, say something that is specific to like people's situations. So, yeah, no, thank you. That's awesome. And, and I know it's been a struggle. Do you think it's working? Having someone else take it, it sounds like that's that's the big advice. The bottom line is, if you found something you're not necessarily good at or don't enjoy, mm -hmm. look mm -hmm. to delegate, right? Mm -hmm. Look to hire mm -hmm. someone. What would you say? Is it is it so far so good? It is a match made in heaven. <laughs> I would yeah, say awesome. am, it really is, and I am so grateful for her. She went on vacation for a week, and I was flailing, and I was like, okay. ah, I need you back. Please come back. And so she's back now. Um, and so you know, it's all systems go. Um but it's great like she really gets it um and she also she also is like a gen z millennial cusp so she also understands the online speak that i'm trying to communicate and it, it, it just works out just all across the board it's really great it's a great time good good uh okay we're gonna wrap up the show unfortunately half hour is come to a close mm -hmm. um if someone wants to get a hold of you uh, mm -hmm. we had a few live viewers here anyone mm -hmm. that might watch this afterward can i give out your email address Absolutely. Reach out? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I've got Hisaro at CarterLawFirm.co. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll share that. Uh, so you guys are welcome to reach out to her via email. If you have any questions about maybe the social media contractor she's working with or anything with respect to Writers Guild or the strikes going on um, or just starting up your own practice, um, my, I'd be available as well. So you're welcome to email me. Here's my email. Um, Hisaro, I'm so glad you're part of my mastermind. This I, I, don't, I don't have to stop here. Uh, <laughs> you know, we get to continue on. If you're out there and you're an attorney practicing, you want to know more about this mastermind, send me an email. We may uh, we, we may be able to do an interview, <laughs> see if you got what it takes yeah. to be a part. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show, Sarah. It's been great. Thank you for me. having me, JD. I appreciate awesome. it. All right. You take care. And bye, everyone. Take care. Thank Have a good you. day. Bye, everyone.